Good morning, everybody. Hope you had a great evening. Hot here in Wichita. We pushed 100 degrees yesterday. Will be the same today, and with the rain that we've had of late, uh, we had humidity to match. So, makes you really, really appreciate <clears throat> the air conditioning. Uh, we're in an interesting situation this week. The um, Yellen's talk on speech on Friday, uh, which is supposed to be about labor, it's not supposed to be about the economy, uh, is being touted as supportive for indexes and financials. Um, I mean, the Fed, like the European Central Bank, like all central banks around the world, like China's, uh, they're going to say what they need to say to rhetorically support the stock market. So. Uh, the top 20 of the G20 central banks are all on the same page. They all move in the same direction. They're all printing money uh, for the most part or using debt uh, to keep things where they are with low interest rates. So I don't think that'll be um, <clears throat> any different. Um, Anybody else having problems with my sound? Testing, testing, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Testing, testing, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Well, I'd like to tell Reg to uh, reboot his machine or re, re enter the room. Um, so um, we're in a situation where my guess is we have ourselves a trading range this week. And we'll probably stay in that trading range because of Yellen. Uh, the news overnight was really limited to inflation out of Great Britain. No new news out of China. Uh, Russia and the Ukraine uh, seem to be settling down. Uh, ISIS uh, seems to be... Um, getting bludgeoned. There were reports again yesterday that uh, uh, the Kurds have been able to retake uh, the dam at Mosul. I don't know if that's true or not. It hasn't been confirmed. Um, so uh, our news today is going to be CPI that no one will pay any attention to, plus a tenth. Core, plus two tenths. Starts. And the reason starts are important is that's the second leg of the Fed's economic recovery, or where their numbers, the growth numbers come from. The automobile sector is number one. Uh, Home Depot this morning reported better than expected earnings, and they've revised upward their forecast for sales and earnings per share for the rest of 2014. And permits, 1.001 million. So um, yesterday's housing index number was uh, beat expectations. It was 55 as opposed to 53 because of um, the growth in housing starts and numbers <clears throat> in the Midwest of all places as opposed to the coast. So we do have some news today. The focus will be right here. It'll be tempered by Yellen's speech on Friday. So I see a trading range, uh, again, with an upward bias. So we, we should have pretty good resistance, 16 to 24. Uh, so we're going to make our first sell, and it's very, very aggressive, 15 to 19. Then 23 to 27. If the E-mini sells, uh, we'll get to our top end of the band. If the E-mini continues to rally, this 16 to 20 should hold. So that's it for the note this bright and warm morning here in Wichita, Kansas. The uh, 20 to 24 is best resistance right now. The closer we can get to 20, the better I'd like to trade. But yesterday, 15 was as good as we could do. On the buy side, uh, we have the single print at 12. Um, and so I'd like to buy cheap. Uh, this five to nine area, but uh, 
it may take 13s to get into. A lot of it's going to be dependent upon the news this morning. So we'll start out uh, assuming 16 to 20 is resistance. We'll uh, play for 4 to 8 to be support. And uh, we may have to raise that by to 13 based on the news. If the housing start numbers come in lower than forecast, uh, we will wish <coughs> we had um, our order at 13. Okay, the knob spread widened overnight. Uh, again, the long-term play. I just don't see the long-term player abandoning any positions uh, because of what's going on in the United States. It is really absolutely amazing that uh, how the situation in the United States has deteriorated on this race deal. The, the race card is being played to drum up support for the elections. And it's a very, very powerful card. Uh, the race card is being played because of the um, race, racial industry, where people get paid lots of money uh, for keeping, fanning the uh, fires of racism. So the uh, martial law was declared. The National Guard was not martial law, but the National Guard was called in. The troops were pull, the cops were pulled back a little bit. So the governor's office gets raided and riot uh, and disruption outside that office for doing that and. Uh, last night, shots were fired again, and the cops and the National Guard had to use tear gas. And no one's trying to dampen this down. Uh, it, it's just it's just amazing that it, it's it's just raw power politics is what it gets down to now. And <clears throat> I don't look for things to quiet down in Ferguson. So we have unrest in Ferguson. It can happen in any big city. Um, in the United States, we have the Ukraine, Russia, we have uh, Iraq, uh, we have everything from Mali to Pakistan. Yesterday, China marched on India, went 25 kilometers into their territory, uh, that, and they, they actually shoot at each other every now and then back and forth across that border. So China has taken on Japan, the Philippines, Vietnam, and now India. So there's a lot of unrest around the globe, and that's why this money's staying in the knob spread. So we are dealing with a trading range with an upward bias. Um, we have these single prints at 10 and at 7, which should be pretty good uh, support. So we're going to make 8 to 12 by 1. And we'll be a little more aggressive here because of the knob spread. And then the overnight session is the buck, so we'll make 29 to the buck. Uh, as uh, buy two on the sell side, 17s to 21s, and then 23s to 27. But you, you know, you, you just, it, it is just really an uncomfortable time. You see the government doing stuff that they shouldn't be doing. They're actually fostering and helping fan these fires of these civil disruptions. That's not good. Um, I mean, some of us remember the riots of 68 and the assassinations. We've been through bad times before, but um, <clears throat> you need to uh, maintain some civil order out there. You can't, it can just get out of, out of hand in a hurry. Okay, gold uh, held at the low end. We were hoping to buy the uh, 95, 97 area. Um, basically, 99 held. We we're hoping to sell into five. Uh, that's where we find ourselves today. I think the situation is the same in gold. We're looking at a trading range with a uh, buyer at 95. And uh, definitely a seller above 1310. And we find ourselves at 02. That's kind of like right in the middle. So the first sell will be 5 to 7. And we'll make 10 to 12 for sell 2. And on the buy side, we'll use 95, 97. And then uh, 90, 92. And look for a sideways market. Not much going on here either.
Okay, we're going to look at the euro. My, uh, my crude quotes are off by $2. And I, uh, Peter and Chris are looking into it. I may have to dump my files and rebuild all of those. But so we'll have to uh, add some numbers to this. We are in the October contract right now. And uh, the uh, September contract goes off the board tomorrow. And once again, you'll see the market. Where does the market need volume? Where does the market trade? It comes back and tries to fill in this volume. So uh, 25 to 50 for what it's worth, then 75 to the buck. And uh, on the downside, uh, we'll make 50 to 75 by one. And I'll try to get these numbers straightened out, then 90, then the buck to 25 for buy two. But uh, these numbers and levels uh, are not correct. But I mind, mine's off exactly two dollars, or it was this morning. Okay, the euro was lower. Uh, overnight, uh, as per our guess, um, the euro uh, economy is softer than ours. Um, they are hamstrung by 30% of their natural gas comes from Russia, and that's not going to change anytime soon. Probably 30 years from now, uh, they'll still be getting gas, natural gas from Russia. Uh, unless they really change their energy mix, like going nuclear, which if you think our greens are bad, they're even uh, stronger in Europe. Um, it, it, it's amazing how much money bad ideas uh, cost and the um, economic uh, damage they do over time. But you get these... It's really a form of crony capitalism. Uh, if you find these people that are willing contributors to political causes, uh, they can get bad law written. And once it's written, it never goes away, or it seems to never go away. Okay, we've got support over here in the um, 30 area, so we'll make 25 to 35 by one. Then the buck, which is where I think we're headed to 10, will be by two. 133 even should bring opposite activity. I don't know if we can get it there today. Uh, we're at 51 right now, so we'll make 60 to 70, sell one. And then 85 to 95, sell two. Playing for a little bit lower, getting stops below the overnight session low. And on to the E-mini. Uh, some of the um, <clears throat> reasons given for the levitation in the stock market were just uh, on ludicrous. Uh, but the bottom line is that Yellen speaks on Friday. Um, it will tend to hold the market uh, at least in a range. And they play for conciliatory or supportive statements out of the Fed every time. So it rallies into FOMC. It rallies into uh, uh, major speeches by the Fed because they want the stock market higher. So when we look at F1, it's pretty hard to deny that volume is moving higher in these distributions. Now, we're at resistance. Can we break it out? Probably not. Uh, the economic, we, we need some economic help. Uh, the Fed's going to be definitely supportive. But you can see right here that structurally this market has been in a rally and the bias has been to the upside. Uh, and I don't think that will change. And I don't think it'll change on Friday because I don't think Yellen's going to say anything that will jeopardize 
you know, at least keeping the stock market here. So no matter what your personal situation is, and no matter what your income situation is, because the stock market is high and perhaps moving higher, um, hope is just around the corner. We have pretty good resistance, 73.75, around kind of where it was yesterday. Then our 79 to 81, which we have worked before. Um, so just so selling the 75 area, plus or minus, for we rejected prices, then S2 will be 79 to 80. On the buy side, we had this last rotate down yesterday at 65. We have 6065, 67 as high as 69. Uh, so we'll make um, this 68 to 70, and it's very, very aggressive. Would rather get it done in the 65, 67 area, but they make us pay up early on to get in, to get off along, and that that has not changed. Uh, that's been the case all year long. Uh, and 74, 76 to sell, so that would be 75 plus or minus and 79, 81. I think the market does have an up bias. Uh, if the housing start numbers come in as forecast, uh, you know, 68 might be a little low, but we'll let them go for a little head fake, go get stops below 70. And the 65, 67 area. Looks pretty good to me. Take at least 20 minutes to get everything out. I'm going to get started on that right now. I'll be back up and in the room as soon as possible. In the meantime, good.